Tell us what you think the actual findings really were. Yeah, look, this is very complicated, Brian. The, uh, the, the, the fact is that there was about a 60% reduction in the immunizing or in protective activity um, of, of the uh, people who've been immunized with the BioNTech vaccine against the B351 or 1351 South African variant. So it's about a two thirds reduction, but that doesn't mean that there's no immunity. You know, it's possible that up to a third of people don't have good protection, but two thirds do have good protection. And this is very consistent with what we've seen from some of the other vaccine companies who said, look, you don't get the 95% protection that you get, for example, against the original virus, but you're still probably going to get something in the range of 50%, which is you know, still much better than nothing. So um, I don't think that we should uh, accept, expect that there's zero protection, but equally, um, there's going to be some definitely some uh, diminution of what we would get. Yeah, and, and again, if please, if I'm wrong about anything, Jeffrey, because this is very complicated stuff, and I and I'm trying to learn it for the last few months. And as I understand, for first off, I think general vaccine, the flu vaccine, is 59 percent effective overall. So people expect vaccines to be 100 percent effective. That's that's not the case. Maybe with the exception of you know smallpox, but otherwise they're not correct. I mean, you're not going to get more than 60 to 80 percent, pretty much on most vaccines anyway. And, and I guess the study, which is very small, did not measure any of that natural T cell response that may actually make it a little, yeah. a little better, no? That's absolutely correct. So uh, look, there's a very wide range of protection conferred, from, conferred by vaccines. Uh, as you point out, flu vaccines, depending upon the year, can be something between 60 and 70% protective. Other vaccines that we have, for example, measles vaccine might be as high as 90 to 95% protective. Um, so, you know, the, as you will recall, the FDA sort of put a line in the sand and said 60% is what we need to see um, to approve a vaccine. And I think that that's a, a, a pretty widely accepted standard. Now, as you, you also point out, there are a number of ways that the body protects us uh, against future exposure to a virus or a bacteria or anything. It's not just down to antibodies. We have a whole other side of the immune system called the cell-mediated immunity, which is T-cells. And and they respond very effectively, but they respond more slowly. So one of the things that could easily play out is that we retain cell-mediated immunity, uh, specifically from the T cells, but that that takes longer. So we get protection against severe disease, but we don't mm -hmm. get the protection against infection. So uh, as you point out, this experiment did not look at any aspect of, of T cells. It didn't really look at functional immunity. All it looked at was the antibody titers in the plasma of the individuals who'd been vaccinated and whether you could dilute that plasma and still suppress the, the replication of the virus in the cell culture system. So it's a very isolated experiment. Um, and, and as I said, practically, it's a two thirds reduction, but it ignores yeah. the way the whole human body responds to a virus or bacteria. Yeah, and we need to take it as such. And very quickly, there was an article last night that one shot of Pfizer may be up to 95% effective. That came out of a study, I believe, in Israel. The bottom line is this. We should be bullish on that Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine against uh, a number of variants, or at least partially so? Well, the, the, the immediate answer is that we should be bullish on any vaccine, because at this stage of the pandemic, particularly in this country, and, and indeed in most other developed uh, countries, any vaccine is better than no vaccine. So that's the, the first thing. Um, secondly, in terms of the, the mRNA, particularly in the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine specifically, um, it's very effective now against most of the circulating viruses. It retains some effectiveness against these variants, such as the South Africa variant, the Brazilian variant. Um, I wouldn't certainly mm -hmm. be recommending one dose of vaccine. But the last thing is they can change these vaccines very, very quickly. It's simply a matter of switching out a few <clears throat> nucleic acids and then remaking the vaccine. So we're predicting that by midsummer, we could have a second gen vaccine that contains these variants if it's necessary. So wow. um, I think we should really panic here. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.